Okay, here's 3.6 transformations of graphs of linear functions. I've split this into two sections um, because it's a really long, um, it's a long section with a lot in there. So this is 3.6.1. Okay, we're going to start with something called a translation, and that's when we're going to shift a graph horizontally, which means left and right. So you know, if I've got a line that I'm shifting left and right, we'll do something like this, right? Or you can shift it up and down which would look something like that, right? So it's just moving something left, right, up and down, up or down, um, but not turning it or, or uh, shrinking it or anything like that. Okay, so, um, all right. Um, uh, for a horizontal translation, so that means we're, we're um, shifting a graph left or right, we're gonna add or subtract to the input of a function, okay? So if you look at these examples, the input's what goes inside of the parentheses when we're working in function notation. So the x plus 7 is going to move things left or right, and so is the x minus 7, okay? And when we go x plus 7, it's actually going to shift the, um, the graph to the left. And when we go x minus 7, it's going to shift it to the right. That might be a little bit counterintuitive. You might think, oh, adding, I'll go to the right, subtracting, I'll go to the left, but that's not the case. Um, it doesn't work out like that. Um, Okay, so let's look at this one. So I'm, I'm, uh, this says f of x is graphed. I've got this straight line that's graphed. And I'm going to find f of x plus 2. All right, so I'm thinking, okay, if something's added to the input. So I know I've got a horizontal movement. So that means this line's going to move left or right. And then if you look up here, when we're adding something, we're moving left. So this means we're going to move everything two units to the left. This is going to shift everything to left. So I'm going to take these two points and move those two units to the left. So that point shifts over there. This point, one, two, is going to shift over there. And then I'll draw my line from there. It's, it's a little... I wouldn't have done these uh, transformations. I wouldn't have started with straight lines because it's hard to see them sometimes exactly what's happening because that straight line you could also, also kind of looks like it's shifted up, but this is I'm trying to show that those points have shifted left. Okay. All right. So when we're going, uh, when we have x minus 3 as our input, that means we're going to go 3 units to the right. We're going to translate 3 units to the right. So I'll take these two points, 1, 2, 3. That one's going to go over there three units. This one, one, two, three, goes over there three units. And then I'll connect the dots to make my new line. Okay. All right. So now let's uh, look at the uh, writing some, messing with some functions uh, without the graph. So we're uh, just looking at the equation part here. So this says write a function g. So, you know, this is function f. It says f of x, but you could have g of h, x or h of x or m of x or whatever, right? Um, we just use f the most often, but um, okay, so we're going to write a different function, function g that is a translation of f of x five units to the right, okay? So looking up above, when we went right, here we had f of x minus 3. So when I'm subtracting, that's going to move things to the right, okay? So my new function is going to be function g. And I'm going to mess with function f to get function g. So following this format, it's going to be f of x minus 5, though, this time, since we're moving 5 units to the right. Okay, so that's what g of x is going to equal. Okay, so now on the next part, I'm going to figure out what f of, f of x minus 5 actually equals. All right, so this means I have function f with an input of x minus 5. So in the original function, the input is x, right? That would be the input. I'm going to change that input to the quantity x minus 5. So I'm thinking of this of 3 times something plus 1. 3 times something plus 1. And now that something is going to be x minus 5. So I'm plugging x minus 5 into function f for the input. Okay, and then I'm going to simplify this. So I'm going to have to distribute the 3 because that will allow me to write this without parentheses. So I'm going to have to work this way here. So let's see. I've got 3x, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Still got the plus 1. And now I can combine those. All right. So I'll use this space down here. 
negative 15 plus 1 would be negative 14. So g of x is going to equal 3x minus 14. Okay. All right, let's try another here. So I'm going to write function g again, okay? And it's going to be um, a translation of function f. So it says a translation of f of x two units to the left. So when we're going to the left, that means we're going to be adding two to the input, okay? So um, I'm looking now at this function, my new function f. I'm inputting x plus two into that, okay? So here, I'll work this way. So f of x plus 2 is going to be 4 times something minus 3. 4 times something minus 3. That something is not x anymore. It's the quantity x plus 2. Okay. And then I'm going to distribute over here. So 4x plus 8. That's after distributing the 4. And I still get the minus 3. And then we can combine those. Okay, and now I'm ready for my final answer here. So g of x, my new function g, is going to be 4x plus 5 when you combine the 8 and the negative 3. Okay. So that's horizontal translations. Now let's take a look at vertical translations on the next page. Okay. So now to shift the graph up or down, we're going to add or subtract to the output of the function. Okay, what that means is we're not adding or subtracting inside the parentheses anymore. We're adding or subtracting to the whole function. So f of x is the output. x would be the input. So we're not adding to x anymore. We're adding to f of x. That's what I mean by the output there. Okay. And this one works the way you would think it work, would work. If you're adding, that means you're going to um, go up. And if you're subtracting, it'll shift down. Okay. So let's try this out. When I got this plus 2 here, that tells me, okay, everything's going to move up 2. As opposed to this one, everything's going to move down 3. So the whole line is moving up 2 units or down 3 units over here. So I'm just going to shift those points that are marked. So let's see, plus 2, I'll shift this up there 2 units and this up here 2 units. So I'll just put small arrows to show those that moved up. And that's what that line looks after it's shifted up 2 units. Down three units, let's see, one, two, three, just enough room for that. One, two, three, and then connect the dots. Okay, and there is my new line shifted down three units. Okay, so let's try writing some functions then. Okay, this says um, we're going to go five units up. So my new function is g, and what I'm going to do is take f of x plus 5. I'm not adding to the input. That would shift it left or right. I'm adding to the output. So um, Now to simplify this, what I'm going to do is substitute in for f of x because I know f of x equals 3x plus 1. Okay, So I'm going to replace the f of x with the quantity 3x plus 1 in parentheses like that. Always use parentheses when you substitute. And I still get the plus 5 on the end. Okay. Now this would look the same without parentheses. So now all I have to do is combine the 1 and the 5. And I've got 3 of, 3x plus 6. Okay. All right. So let's try this one. Now we're going to move two units down. So my new function g is going to be this function shifted two units down, so f of x minus two. Okay, and just like the previous problem, now I'm gonna substitute in for f of x. This time f of x is four x minus three. So the quantity four x minus three minus two, and then I can combine the negative three and the negative two, and that would give me four x minus five. Okay, so that's translations when we're sliding things left, right, up, or down. Let's look at some reflections, okay? Um, so a translation, um, you can think of this as flipping. It's flipping a line over some, some other line. So um, a transformation that flips a graph over a line called the line of reflection.
Okay, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. All right. So um, we're to start off with, we're going to be reflecting over the x-axis and the y-axis. So um, my line of reflection on this, uh, to reflect over the x-axis, we're going to multiply the output by negative 1. Okay. So that means if we're reflecting f of x over the x-axis, it's going to be negative f of x. We're going to multiply the output. The output is f of x. The input would be x. And if you multiply the input by negative 1, that's something different. That's going to be reflecting over the y-axis. We'll, we'll get to soon. But here over the x-axis, so I'm thinking, okay, my line of reflection, um, I'm going to be reflecting over the x-axis here because that's what this does. Okay, and then, you know, this does the same thing on that next problem. So both of these, um, I'm going to be reflecting over the x-axis. So this is my line of reflection. Okay, uh, I'm just going to highlight that on both of these. So that means that this line is going to get flipped over that. So if you imagine that um, this rotates 180 degrees, um, that means this line is going to flip something like that. Okay, and this one, if I if I reflect over the x-axis, it'll look something like that. Okay, so um, here's how I like to handle this. We don't have an equation for this line here, although we could find one. Um, we're just going to do this graphically to start with. So choose a point that's on the line. Here I've got two points marked already. So I'm just going to reflect these points over the uh, um, x-axis first. So what I'm thinking, if I folded this paper in half over the... Uh, over this dotted line, and this was wet paint that I had that point in, it would leave a mark up here, okay? So I'm thinking, okay, that's one unit away from the x-axis. If I go the shortest possible distance to the x-axis, you go one unit up. So if you go one unit past the x-axis, then that point is going to end up right there, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing with this. This isn't going to move up just because that one moved up, because then this wouldn't be reflecting over the x-axis. So I'm going to take this point, and that I'd have to go two units down to get to the x-axis. So that means I'm going to go two units farther down to get this to this new point, right? So I kind of moved this point up and this point down. I reflected both those points, and when you have two points graphed for a line, then you can just draw in your line. Okay, and that's what the new function is going to look like. So this would be negative f of x that I just uh, graphed here. So hopefully you can visualize that that's, see how that's reflecting over the x-axis. All right, let's try it again on this one. So this I can see, hey, this point's one unit below the x-axis. So if I go one unit above, there's that point reflected. This one's two units above. So I'm going to go two units below the x-axis. So now I've reflected both those points. And I just draw in the line. And there we go. And there's negative f of x. Okay. All right, let's look at the equation side of things. So uh, reflecting over the x-axis, this says write a function g. Okay, so here's function g. And we're going to reflect f of x over the x-axis. So this is going to be negative f of x. That means it's the opposite of f of x. Okay. So like we were doing on the last page, now I'm going to do some substitution. I'm going to substitute in for f of x. f of x is equivalent to 3x plus 1. But here's where you have to be careful. If you just write this, that's actually incorrect. Because you always want to, want to use um, parentheses when you substitute. So where I have the f of x, I want to use parentheses. And that's super important because that means I'm taking the opposite of both of those terms. It's not just going to be negative 3x plus 1. It's the opposite of the quantity 3x plus 1. I have to take the opposite of both of these terms. So I need to distribute the negative. You can think of that as a negative 1 out there. And I would be multiplying both terms by negative 1. And that means for my final answer, I'm going to get negative 3x minus 1. The common wrong answer on this problem would be just writing it as negative 3x plus 1, um, you know, without parentheses. Having that 1 be positive instead of negative. But it should be negative after you, distribute, after you uh, do the distributing. Okay? That's why it's important to use parentheses when you substitute. All right, let's try another here. Um, I'm over the x-axis, I'm going to do negative f of x. 
So I'm taking the opposite of f of x, so I'm going to substitute into this and make sure you use parentheses there again. Okay, f of x was 4x minus 3. And then I want to distribute that negative 1 or the negative, so that would give me negative 4x plus 3. It's going to change this, the sign of both terms. Okay, you can also think of this, it's just going to change the sign. It's the opposite of all of the terms when you reflect over the x-axis. So you can just look at the equation and change the sign of all the terms because that's exactly what happened on both of these problems, right? Okay, so we've reflected over the x-axis. Now let's do some reflections over the y-axis. Um, okay, so um, the y-axis is right here, right? We're going to be reflecting over this on both of these problems. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. To reflect over the y-axis, we're going to multiply the input by negative 1, not the output. The output... That's what we did when we reflected over the x-axis. Here we're reflecting over the y-axis, okay? So f of x reflected over the, the y-axis is going to be equal to f of negative x, okay? It's different, right? The negative when we we're going over the x-axis was out here. Now we're multiplying the input by negative 1, okay? All right, so before we get to the equations, let's just graph these. Now this is interesting because this point is already on the y-axis. So when I try to reflect that point over the y-axis, it just stays put. It's going to stay right there. But this point will move, okay? So it's one unit to the left of the y-axis. So I'm thinking, okay, if I go one unit to the right, there I am on the y-axis, so let's go out another unit. And now I've reflected that point over the y-axis, and I connect the dots. So yeah, if a point is on the line of reflection, it's just going to stay on the line of reflection for, the, um, for uh, the reflection. Okay, and let's try this one. So there we go, reflected that point. That one was one to the, to the right of the y-axis, so I put that one one to the left. This is three units to the left, so let's put the new point three units to the right. And then we can draw our graph. A little sloppy there, oh well. Okay, all right. So let's look at the equation side of things again then. Okay. So now we're reflecting over the y-axis on both of these. Okay. So um, g of x then will be f of negative x. Okay. So it's not just changing all of the signs like I would if I was going over the x-axis. This isn't going to be negative 3x minus 1 for my final answer. So what I need to do, I need to be careful. I'm just changing the input. So I'm looking at function f, and the input in the original function is x. So I'm going to replace that x with negative x, okay? So I'm thinking of this as 3 times something plus 1. So I'm actually going to write that. It's 3 times something plus 1. The something is my new input, which is negative x, okay? And then I'm going to simplify this. So all there is to do here is the multiplication, 3 times negative x, would be negative 3x. So the 1 does not change signs there. Okay. All right, let's try it again. So uh, there's two parts of this that's tricky. You have to know how to deal with function notation, and then you have to remember the difference between what you do uh, reflecting over the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay. So f of negative x. So I'm thinking, okay, I've got 4 times something minus 3. 4 times something minus 3. That something is going to be negative x. And again, I multiply here, and that will be negative 4x minus 3. So that's what function g is going to look like. Okay, okay in part 2, we will look at stretches and shrinks. Okay, all right, but that's it for this video.